As you can probably tell, I went ahead and decided to go ahead and do the chain bridge. I went ahead and decided to go ahead and that didn't, that was stupid. That was a stupid statement. I mean, that was just a dumb sentence. Start to finish, stupid. I'm doing the chain bridge. Oh, yeah! I'm not gonna use C channel. I'm gonna try something challenging and something that's probably gonna break. Or that's what everybody's gonna tell me is it's probably gonna break. So, whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and use this plate. Making little pockets that the springs are gonna set in. So the springs are gonna sit in from underneath. And then I'm gonna reinforce the top of this and reinforce the sides. I got some pretty big angle iron. Kinda gonna make my own C-channel. That's the goal. Box this sucker in, it's gonna be strong. I'm guessing strong enough to hold what it needs to hold. Um, but yeah, making these little boxes, just add some angle. Run another like that. So yeah, weld up some boxes, or another box, I already got one done. Weld up this one, get it on here, and then go ahead and finish welding up all the way around it. Custom. Probably wonder why I didn't just use C-channel. Uh, the underside of this Lincoln's kind of an odd shape, so C-channel didn't look like it was gonna fit under there for me. Um, and plus I wanted to make some little boxes to help hold the spring. Um, because of where I have to weld this plate in is actually lower than where the factory spring perches were by about this much. So that way I can still lay as low as I was before and have some strength. I'm gonna do quite a bit of reinforcing to this thing, so I'm not too worried about the strength. It's gonna be pretty strong, hopefully strong enough. It'll let me know if it's not strong enough. All right, hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> Big old piece of angle iron running down the center. Welding it there. Those two pieces all the way across, up, down. And then I'm probably actually gonna run some angle kicking down or maybe just some plate, I'm not sure yet. I usually have no clue what I'm doing until I'm actually doing it, so I think that'll be strong enough. Should. Because those, those are pretty strong. They're not going anywhere. And then I'm going to flip it over and then I'm going to put um, some more chain points like there is right there. I'm probably going to put a couple of them different spots so I can adjust them if I need to. I'm not sure if I want them running like in a V or if I want them running in an A. Everyone's gonna have their opinion on which way is better. I've heard stories both ways. So I think I'm gonna run them to where I can just switch them from side to side and see for myself what works the best. So that's where we're at. That's what you get right there. Look at that. Look at that. I'm gonna do some more reinforcing on it still. I'm gonna reinforce the reinforcements. Then I'm gonna box in all the boxes and then reinforce the boxed boxes and then run a plate. And then beef that up with some gussets and then run some beams and then put a C channel on it. That should hold. Got all my little chain uh, holders cut. Like I said, I'm gonna do four of them on there. I'm gonna put two on each side in different places so I can decide whether I wanna run the chains in a V or in an A shape.
This is the back side of the bridge. You won't actually see this when it's up in the car. Let me flip this big sucker over though. Oh my God. That thing is hefty. That's gonna be the side that's facing down. So these are gonna be the pockets. For the springs and cylinders. And then I got some options for where I'm gonna run my chain. So I'll be able to figure out what spot I like. Two of them will never get used once I figure out once I figure out what spot works the best, but at least I'll be able to adjust it without having to get up underneath there and weld up another tab. So that'll be nice. I'm gonna clean up the um, tubing a little bit, get some rough edges, take a little die grinder, clean, clean up those rough edges. But yeah, I think it's pretty well ready to go up in the car. Um, I'm gonna get underneath there, clean off the frame rails, get those down to bare metal. And then I'll probably have to have another person <laughs> under there with me, which is gonna be just a, a crap job to have, laying underneath that car with me, holding up while I shower your lap and sparks from welding it up there, but I think it's gonna to be too heavy for me to hold it up there myself, unless I can run like a ratchet strap or something. I like ratchet straps. <laughs> so that's the next thing, clean off the frame rails, uh, get both pieces prepped to weld, Get it up there, get it nice and square level, all that fun stuff. And weld that sucker in and move on with life. And then I can put my rear end back in, which would be nice. I still don't have a drive shaft for it. I took it to a local shop that claimed they could do it. I sent him a picture of the Black Magic one. I dropped it off with him. He's like, yeah, we got everything we need to make one of those. I'm like, cool. That that's nice to hear. Dropped it off with him. Um, didn't hear anything, well my dad dropped it off while I was at work. Didn't hear anything from the guy all day. And so five o'clock rolls around, I give him a call. I'm like, hey, what's up with the drive shaft? Uh, what do you want me to do with this thing? So obviously he doesn't know what he's doing. <clears throat> um, then he told me that he actually doesn't have all the parts to make one. So I went and picked that back up, took it to another drive shaft shop. Said they said the same thing. Um, but I, I really think these people could do it. But they have to order in some parts. That's gonna take a week or so. I just went ahead and ordered the Black Magic slip yoke. Be done with it. They were out of stock two weeks ago when I started this journey. Well, now they're back in stock and no one has done anything with my drive shaft. So I'm just gonna order the Black Magic one, be done with it and then have this drive shaft shop welded in. So hopefully next week sometime, maybe by the end of the week, I'll have my drive shaft back, but I still got a lot of work to do uh, to get this thing nice. And then I can kind of fine tune everything before I get my drive shaft. So next video, this sucker's going in. And if you guys see anything that I'm doing that you want a little more information on, more specific information, just let me know. And I can make some sort of crap video about it. I mean, it ain't gonna be great because I really have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> now, the, the problem is why I don't explain a whole lot, like detail in my videos is because I usually don't know what I'm doing until I'm doing it. <clears throat> and even when I'm doing it, I don't know what I'm doing. Most of the stuff that I'm doing is uh, first time for me. So I don't want to sit here and tell you guys, hey, this is how it's done. This is how you should do it. But if you're interested, I'll tell you how I did it. I'm not saying it's going to work because um, I don't know yet, but we'll see. Everything will let you know if it's not going to work because it'll just whoo, disintegrate on you. Driving down the road and this thing is just going to blow apart. I got a feeling. Whole rear end's going to blow apart. Cylinders are going to go up through the trunk, blow out my back window, explode into my gas tank, and then boom! 
No more Lincoln. Full coverage though. <laughs>